Now, how does shaitan know all of this? How does he know the day of judgment? How does he know about the fact that Adam is going to have a progeny? How does he know all of this? So there's a big debate in the, in the ulama of tafsir of how Iblis knows this. So one of the things is that he got to know this because of the jinn anbiya, the, the prophets who were jinns who came to the earth before the creation of Adam Either he knew from what they had said because obviously prophets, Allah reveals to the prophets the, the future sometimes. So either he knew from there or there is, there is some weak narrations to suggest that Allah Azza wa Jal had given some of that knowledge onto the greatest of angels of what would come, what would come about in the future. And we know for example on Laylatul Qadr, the lower angels of this heaven, they will receive the orders from the higher angels and Allah would have revealed it to them and that passes down. Now what used to happen is that when, the, when this uh, information or some information was revealed, it would go pass down and some of the angels would have a conversation about it. So some of them would be talking about it. And Iblis was obviously walking around and he was worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal from amongst the ranks of the angels before he was cast outcasted. So he possibly gained this knowledge of what is going to happen from there. Whatever the case is, Iblis definitely knew of certain events. He knew of the Day of Judgment. And therefore he asked to stay alive until the day of judgment. He also now knew that if Adam was going to have a progeny. And he also knew that Adam السلام, would most probably be sent from this Jannah onto the dunya, onto the earth. So now having this knowledge, his jealousy and his arrogance made him say that, Oh Allah, I am going to lead his progeny towards hellfire. Now, in Surah Al-A'raf, what Iblis says is that he'll come from different angles. So he says, Min bayni aydihim, I'm going to come from in front of them. Wa min khalfihim, I'm going to come from behind them. Wa an aymanihim, I'm going to come from their right side. Wa an shimanihim, I'm going to come from their left side. Wa la tajidu aktharahum shakirin. You're not going to find most of them grateful to you. Now, in this particular ayah in Surah Araf, what he's saying is that he's going to try from four different sides. And there's a beautiful dua of the Prophet, which is in a Sahih tradition, that when the Maghrib time comes and when Fajr time comes, there are a number of duas a person can, can read to try and stay from, away from the shaitan. It's particularly Fajr and Maghrib. Why Fajr and Maghrib is because these are the two times when the angels are making their shift to the heavens and these are also the times when the shayateen are trying to find their greatest influence as well on the human being and maghrib has been mentioned in hadith particularly where prophet ﷺ said don't send your young children out you know after maghrib because that's when there's a great sort of influence of shayateen that come out and the other heavy influence they have is the time of fajr so rasulullah sallallahu has told us you know many duas okay many duas and one of the duas is if you can say this allahumma hafazni oh allah protect me min bayni yadayya from in front of me wa min khalfi from behind me wa an yamini from my right side wa an shimali from my left side wa min fawqi from above me wa a'udhu bi 'adhamatika an ughtala min tahti and i seek protection in the greatness of your majestic qualities from the fact that i may be taken over from beneath so when iblis said that i'm going to attack the sons of adam or the daughters of adam when i'm going to attack them from four different sides Allah's Messenger has given us a dua that you seek protection from six different sides. Allah.